All right, so now that we've learned something about vectors, now I want to think about combining vectors for right now, or sometimes you'll hear me say adding vectors. So combining or adding, sometimes you'll hear me say that, vectors. So this is, uh, what we're dealing with here is you might sometimes, and actually this is pretty common, have more than one vector that you have to combine. In other words, you've got more than one velocity vector that you've got to combine, or more than one acceleration vector. Um, we're going to start off, I want uh, to begin, I want to think about um, displacement vectors. I didn't mention this in, the, in that last video, but displacement is also a vector. I forgot to mention that, that this is probably the, the most, uh, the simplest vector, because um, if you think about it, when we were discussing displacement, displacement was just like distance, but we indicated that it has to have a direction. So displacement could be positive or negative, where distance was never positive or negative. So let's think about some displacement vectors, and this will help us think about uh, some of the, the ways you can combine vectors. And we're going to start with the simplest example first, which is, what if you have two vectors that are pointed in the same direction, what we'll call parallel? So this is really, really straightforward. But here, I've got two vectors that are going in the same direction. So in terms of a displacement vector, maybe I walk, for instance, two meters to the left or to the right here. So this is two meters. And then I walk three meters to the right. So I've got two vectors. One is two meters to the right. One is three meters to the right. What is my total displacement if I combine these? Well, if I walk to the right two meters and then walk to the right three more meters, it's pretty obvious that I've gone to the right a total of five meters. So you can see I'm using the arrows here. Right, The length of the arrow indicates the size. So two is shorter than three and five is longer than three so you have a, a sense of the relative size of the the vector um, uh, pretty straightforward if they're parallel all you do is add them up that's you just add them right if you have two vectors pointing the same way you add them really 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 straightforward the second one is also the second method for combining vectors is also um, pretty obvious and this is when they're pointed in opposite directions this is called anti-parallel. So if you've got two vectors pointed in opposite directions, you might have already been able to figure out what you're going to do here. You're just going to end up subtracting them. So for instance, if I, let's do two and three. If I go two meters to the right, and then I go three meters to the left, it's pretty obvious to see what's going to happen here. If I combine these two, um, if I've got two to the right, if I walk two meters to the right and three meters to the left, it's equal to one meter to the left. So you can see that I've simply subtracted their values. Um, three minus two is one. Put my unit there. Three minus two is one. And the fact that the, the vector pointed to the left is bigger than the one pointed to the right means that my, my answer here is going to be to the left. So. When they're anti-parallel, when they're opposite, you subtract. Going through this kind of quickly, but I, I think it's pretty straightforward. Hopefully this isn't too tricky. Um, you have two arrows pointed the same way, you just add them up. If they're pointed opposite ways, you simply subtract them. So that's um, pretty straightforward. One little term I want to throw in here is when you combine vectors, the thing you get, so the, in this case the one meter here or the five meter up here, the, the vector that you get when you combine two or more vectors, we call the resultant vector. It's the result that you get when you combine two vectors, so we call it the resultant vector. So you'll hear me use that phrase when I combine vectors. The, the thing you get when you combine more than one vector is the resultant um, so parallel, anti-parallel, these are the two most straightforward examples. Um, again, I've been using displacement right, as my sample 
as my example here, but you could combine velocity vectors this way, you can combine acceleration vectors this way, but for right now we're thinking of the most straightforward example of um, displacement. So that's the first two ways. Now let's talk about trickier case. Now I want to think about, um, and we haven't done this before, we've never done this before so far in the course, I'm going to think about moving now in two dimensions. So I'm not just moving in a line back and forth. So now I want to consider what if I were to walk two meters, let's say, to the in one direction, and then turn 90 degrees. So I'm not turning around and coming back the same way. I'm turning 90 degrees, and now I'm moving at a 90 degree angle. In other words, how would I combine vectors that are at right angles? This is our first sort of chance to talk about two-dimensional motion. So to, to, re to draw this out, I would say, okay, well, what would I get if, let's say, I went now three meters to the right, and then once I got to this point here, so I go three meters that way, I turn 90 degrees and go four meters this way. Okay. The question is, what is my overall displacement, right? I've gone three meters to the right and four meters down. What's my overall displacement? Um, it might be kind of obvious when I draw it, when you draw it out this way, that this looks, I've got a right angle here, and you can see that the total displacement start to finish. The total displacement could be represented by this line here, this arrow. This here is my resultant. Here's my resultant now. And you can see clearly this resultant is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So some of you may already be um, on top of this. It's it, it might be pretty obvious to see that you're going to get the resultant. You're going to get the value of the resultant by using the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so what you're going to do here is take, we'll call this, call this C. Call this A. And this here is B. And you simply say that the resultant c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared equals 9 plus 16. So c squared equals 25. Take the square root, and of course here it's simply 5 meters. So the resultant in this case is 5 meters. This is, of course, the 3, 4, 5 right triangle that you learned about in, in geometry class. No big surprise there. Um, long story short, right angles, you're using your Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So now, anytime I'm moving with multiple vectors, and, and those vectors are at right angles, to find the resultant, to get the... The, the answer when you try to add these two together when they're at right angles, I don't add the values, I don't subtract the values, I have to take the two values and do the Pythagorean theorem to get the resultant. Hopefully that makes sense. I know that you guys are pretty familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, so hopefully um, uh, that makes enough sense to you. All right, the last thing I want to discuss, the, the, the fourth instance where you might be combining vectors is what if you had two vectors, two displacement vectors, that were not either going the same way or opposite or at 90 degrees? What if you had two vectors at, I'll just call them other angles? In other words, what if, for instance, I went three, vec three meters to the right, and then what if I went four meters at some other angle. So here's my four meter vector, and I'm, I've gone through this angle here, and I could just make up some value for this. That looks like, I don't know, what does it look like? Maybe, uh, maybe that could be a 120 degree angle. So now I've got these two displacement vectors. I've walked three meters to the right, and then I've turned through this angle, and now I'm going four meters sort of down and to the right. Well, how far have I gone in total? We can represent the result in here, again, by drawing a line from here, the very starting point, to here, the very ending point. There's my resultant. 
And the question is now, how am I going to combine these two vectors, right? How am I going to put them together? Clearly, I can't add them. They're not going the same way. I can't subtract them. They're not opposite. And I can't do the Pythagorean theorem because this angle here, which I'm calling theta, this angle is not 90 degrees. So I've got to come up with some other way to combine these two vectors. Some of th th This is a, a technique in math that you've definitely learned before, but I'm going to remind you of it because it's not as maybe as commonly used or as familiar as the Pythagorean theorem, and that's the law of cosines. So we're going we're gonna to use the law of cosines here. And the law of cosines, I'll write it out just as a reminder to you guys because you may not have seen it for a while. The law of cosines says that c squared, where c is the resultant, equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. And again, theta here, theta is the angle. And I want to make a point right now. Theta has to be the angle between the vectors when they're drawn tip to tail in this way. So in this case, the theta, the, the theta is 120 degrees, right? I've got A is 3, B is 4, and the angle theta is 120. So to figure out the resultant for the, for the problem that I've given you, we need to use the law of cosines. So now if I go, go ahead and try to do the calculation, um, C is my resultant. That's what I'm looking for, right? So I'm going to say that C squared equals A squared. Let's call A 3. So that's 3 squared, which is 9 plus, let's call B, 4. So this is A, and this is B, and my result is C. So uh, 4 squared, I'm going to get 16, minus 2 times 3 times 4, that's going to be 24, times the cosine of 120 degrees. And you're going to want to use your calculator for that. Type in cosine 120, and you should get negative 0.5. A quick word on this, when you go to use your calculator, there's two modes that your calculator could be in. Your calculator could be in degrees, which you want it to be because this angle has been given to you in degrees, or your calculator could be in radian mode. We haven't talked about measuring angles in radians, but um, we will a little bit later on. But um, for right now, you need your calculator to be in degree mode in order to get the right answer here. If your calculator is in radian mode, you won't get the right answer. So if you're uncertain about this, hit the mode button on your graphing calculator, and you'll see the third entry down. It could be either highlighted radians or degrees. Take a moment and make sure that your calculator is in degree mode for now. Um, so now we just have to finish this off. Um, uh, we can see here that if we add up 9 plus 16, you're gonna, this is going to end up being 9 plus 16 plus 12. If I take 24 times negative 0.5, I get negative 12, but I'm subtracting a negative, which is adding. So I end up with c squared equal to 46. Take the square root, and I see that c is about 6.78 meters. Be sure to check that at home. Make sure that you're able to get the same answers that I'm getting here. So that means that at this particular case, if I were to walk 3 meters to the right and then turn, and walk four meters down at an angle of 120 degrees, the total displacement here, C in this case, is 6.78 meters. So uh, that's really all that I wanted to introduce you to in this video was the four different ways of combining vectors. So uh, I guess quickly to review here, um, we started off by combining vectors if they're in the same direction, parallel, in which case you simply added them. 2 plus 3 is 5. In a case where they were pointed opposite one another, what I called anti-parallel, you subtract the two vectors. 2 minus 3 is 1. And again, you can see the arrow head is indicating the direction of the resultant. 
Next, we talked about vectors that are at right angles to one another. And in this case, we had a three unit vector and a four unit vector that were at right angles to one another. And we, we could see that uh, you can draw the resultant using the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, you can calculate the resultant. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And we did an example here. And then finally, maybe the least familiar example was when the two vectors are at some other angle, not 90 degrees, not pointed in the same direction, not pointed opposite. So here you needed to use the law of cosines to find the resultant. Um, and we, we talked a little bit about that. So um, uh, you're, we're going to have plenty of opportunity to practice using these techniques of combining vectors in class. So um, don't, uh, if, if, this is, if this is feeling a little bit overwhelming right now, in class, we're going to try lots of practice problems that will will get you feeling a little bit more a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more confident. Um, so, um, hopefully, that was helpful. In class, more practice to come.